Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be doing some cognacs. Um, not independently bottled, cast strength, you know, single barrel cognacs sourced only from a single distributor in, I don't know, Norway or something. These are just regular old cognacs bottled at 40% um, with, you know, the standard uh, designations rather than age statements or vintages or anything like that. Um, what makes it fun is, is that it's frappon. Um, so one of the, one of the cooler, not big names. Um, so certainly not among the big four of Henny or Corvosia and Martel and, and Remy. Um, but also not, you know, not really pushing things hard among the independents like Daniel Boyu or, or some of those others. Um, Frappan is uh, sort of so sort of one of the quasi branded alternatives out there, um, and they so they and you know they've been doing this for a little while. Uh, their family has been making wine and later brandy in uh, southwest France since 1270, which is not yesterday. Um, so you know obviously they play that in their marketing quite a bit, but uh, fair dues they've 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 had some time uh, in the trenches on this. Now, so what I've got here is a little tasting set. I have no notes. I'm just going to be doing this on the fly. Um, and uh, we'll be tasting through their VSOP uh, and their XO. And here it is. Now, they did just score uh, a new distributor or importer, I should say. The PM Spirits guys who do a ton of cool stuff just got a hold of them and hopefully they can uh, strong arm these folks into doing, you know, single barrel and cast strength and releases and other cool stuff like that. But at the moment, it's, uh, you know, 40%, no age statement, you know, all that kind of, uh, the standard, you know, uh, cognac producedness. Um, so we're going to taste through these two. But of course, it wouldn't be... Uh, a whole lot of fun to just do that, right? It would just, you know, I could taste through them, score them in 10 minutes, and that would be it. Um, so let's uh, let's introduce a little bit more fun to this uh, by tasting something I haven't had in a couple of years, but um, I feel like I should probably have some word to say on it. What we got here is a, uh, a sample bottle of Henny VS. Um, I bought this along with a whole bunch of other sample bottles in, my, in a run to Evergreen Park where it's still legal to sell 50 milliliter bottles. I was there to get some, some uh, Macallan, but I saw this and I was like, what, what the hell? Uh, I think it is really important. I, I know, you know, reviewers are going to focus on the, the limited edition, super cool stuff out there, but um, it is worth paying attention to things like this. Um, Henny VS, I, I think a quarter, something like a quarter of all cognac bottles, period, sold anywhere, are Henny VS, this stuff. Um, so Henny is by far the biggest, by far the biggest brand in cognac. So this, this makes them a little bit of a baseline that, uh, you know, folks like Frappan and everyone else kind of have to deal with. I'm going to add literally a drop of water before I start sampling through this. Now, I don't remember liking Henny VS very much the last time I tried it, but um, you know what? It would make me really happy to be able to come out and say, you know what? Um, uh, the hip hop folks, they got it right. This is good stuff. I just haven't tried it yet. So um, let's see what we got. Hennessy VS, very special cognac, uh, bottled at 40%. Um, there is a lot number on here, but I mean, so it's this is probably bottled circa 2020. All right, um, what do we got on the nose? You know, the nose isn't bad. Um, there's a citrus thing going on, which I really appreciate. There's a, a lot of orange marmalade along with some bergamot happening. There's some a little bit of a, an herbaceous character here. It's very young, I can tell. Um, it just has the feel of something that hasn't been uh, off the still that long. 
So still very spirity. There's some floral characteristics. Oh, but then there's that thing I, I don't like, more so than the flowers. Um, there's a thing I remember really, really not liking about Henny v, v, VS, which is the kind of metallic aspect of it. So the more I smell the, the, the floral thing, the more it actually comes off as, yeah, metallic. Like I'm nosing some steel mesh or something like you would clean your sink out with. Uh, some raisins, like sweet caramely raisins. Smells, you know, young, a little basic. Uh, definitely a little kind of smudged. The 40% is not helping with this, nor are the, I'm sure, the humongous batch sizes, but... Uh, you know, pleasant enough nose. All right, on the palette, um, here we go. Ooh. Okay, so uh, can't, arrived fine, and then that the the kind of steel mesh metallic note kind of comes and takes over the palette, along with a uh, kind of bitter unpleasant kind of oh um not quite cardboard it's like it's more like um slightly like wet wood like like uh wood that's been kind of lying in water for a little while and it's starting to get a little you know a little gross um that kind of thing that's the finish the arrival is is okay um hold on i'm gonna back up i'm gonna try to think of, of nice things to say about this Yeah, it does take that turn, which kind of turns it off for me. But let me see. I have a couple, a couple things. A couple things. Um, so first of all, this is better than I remember it being from uh, ten years ago, where I remember it being just kind of dreadful. This is, you know, not really my thing, not really my cup of cognac, but um, not horrible at all. The, the problem with this is like the price point, right? This a bottle of Henny VS, a full bottle, goes for about. 45 bucks, which is way too much for what's in this glass. Um, oh, what else do I like about it? So it isn't that sweet. I remember the uh, the A door that I reviewed a couple of months ago actually being sweeter than this. Not to say this is like super dry or anything, but the, the sugar content, the dosage, is not annoying me to an excessive level on this. There's, there's much worse cognacs out there for, you know, the... This that that kind of hit me with more syrupiness than this does. I also like the the citric aspect. The um, I like that there's some sour in this, some some acidity. Uh, I'm gonna try this one more time. And we're really staying with the the, the marmalade, bergamot thing. Lots of raisin, kind of follows the nose. Lots of raisins, um, lots of kind of, not really caramel, it's more like uh, custard, like sweet custard. Uh, slightly honeyed, and then a lot of uh, like, yeah, like, like kind of gross, wet woodiness on the back end, along with that sort of meshy note. Um, the strength is not helping this, and it feels a little bit uh, def the finishes definitely feels clipped as far as the the nice flavors go. Um, it's hard to say what to do with this. Hold on, one more try. Okay, normally this would this would be a place for me to do the rant of like, oh, you would, this would be so much better at higher strength and so forth and so on i don't think that's the underlying problem with this this just feels like um i mean they sell what eight million eight eight or eight, eight or nine million cases of this every year i mean part of me has to feel for them because they have to be like buying up every single drop of cognac that they can to throw into these batches and it just feels like the underlying 
not all of the underlying stuff going into this is that good. Um, a lot of it's just holding it back. The 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 dosage, the kind of fake uh, wood added right at the end, they aren't helping, but it really just feels like they've, they've tried to make, they're, they're trying to sell too much of this stuff. Um, especially when you, you've got like, um, you know what, hold on. Sorry, we're going off script. All right, so my warm-up for this was the the Duce I reviewed last year. Or was it this earlier this year? Maybe I can't remember. Um, around the same price as the Henny. This is a VSOP. Not wasn't my favorite thing in the world. Um, just more complete on the palette. Um, it doesn't take that hard left turn towards kind of Unpleasantville. It's very uh, ashy and peppery and kind of woody on the back end. Um, and the, it's not certainly not coating my mouth. Most of what's happening is right at the front. Um, but this doesn't... The finish on, on this Duce is so much more satisfying than what's going on in the Henny. Um, it's also a hair bit drier still even though that the Henny is not obnoxiously sweet. All right. Actually, I need to give this a, this a final score. It just feels kind of... kind of muddled and stretched and like it's trying to do too much at with too much volume. Um, there's a little floral action in the palette, which I like. You can tell this is still cognac. But then, yeah... It just kind of peters out. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't really. I also really don't like it. I'm gonna give this like 70, 75 points, seventy six points, because um, I kind of like that orange thing. 76, 76 points out of hundred uh, for the henny, and let's move on. I mean, for the money, I mean, seriously, go with the Duce. Um, it's also still not my favorite thing, but it, it, the Duce has also this, along with the kind of the better finish and the better sort of wood integration, it also has um, this kind of musty thing that I really like. It's kind of cool. All right, um, so that's our warm-up. Let's move on to the, uh, now that we're like 13 minutes in, let's move on to the actual frappon, which I'm supposed to be re reviewing. Okay. Um, this is the VSOP. So by, uh, by law, it has to be four years old. Everything in here, in here has to be four years old. Okay, kind of a different plan. Um, lots of, lots of, lots more floral action. Almost too much. It's almost potpourri or, or soap-like. But it's not crossing that line. It's tiptoeing it. Some complex, uh, fruity, woody elements on the, uh, underneath that. Um, peach, stone, uh, stone fruit more generally, peach, nectarine. Uh, some lime, actually, like uh, lime zest. Little hints of, of orange, but nowhere near as much as, as the Hennessy. This is, there's much more going on in the nose. The, the, the strength, the bottling strength, is not helping this uh, because it's kind of, again, um, smudging things. It's hard to pick out individual elements when, when it's been forced down to 40%, but you can tell there's more going on. Um, some herbaceousness. There's um, uh, maybe some, some thyme in there, some parsley. Um, the, it's really the floral, the flowers, the floral, the floral stuff d dominating this. Uh, all Grand Grand Champagne in all the frappons here. Uh, I believe I believe it's all estate grown stuff too. They have like a big, big let's say something like I don't know, two hundred acres or something in Grand Champagne. 
Okay, um, a little bit more oakiness coming out, a little, little vanilla, a little uh, uh, kind of wood ash, like uh, just toasted common wood, common oak, I mean. And that's kind of it on the palette. Okay, considerably better than the Henny. Comes off as, okay, so on the arrival in the mid palette, comes off as sweeter, but the finish is actually drier. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I don't, it, it, parts of this feel sweeter than even the Hennessy was, but um, I don't think this is actually dosed. Yeah, brandy's funny. It can do that sometimes when it it, it feels sweeter than it actually is. Because I'm looking for that syrupy note that is kind of the dead giveaway on the, on the finish. And it's not really there. It's kind of more like this kind of uh, almost fruit juicy note that's been kind of fruit juice that's been uh, filled up with black pepper and kind of ash and over stewed tea. Um, I guess I should give me more tasty notes than that. So on the front end, actually lots of orange. Again. Um, more like uh, almost a Grand Marnier thing than uh, the marmalade I was getting on the, on the Henny. But lots of orange. Lots of kind of dustiness. Um, like old attic kind of, kind of stuff. Um, then it transitions. It, it feels quite sweet, like a, almost like a, yeah, almost like a, like a liqueur kind of thing. And then that kind of that sweetness kind of drops out all of a sudden, and you're left with this just kind of halo of yeah, the, the fruit juiciness mixed in with the pepper and the ashiness. Um, it's a very interesting development on this guy. And again, quite floral on the palate. I feel like I'm, especially at the uh, on the front end, I feel like I'm chewing on on flower petals, and it's delicious. Um, and also, you like spray just a little bit of of um, expensive perfume in my mouth. Um, very actually pretty nice. And and you know, I'm going to say this: the strength is holding it back a little bit. It, it, again, it feels. Fudged. It feels a little bit clipped, a little bit short, um, uh, but still quite nice. I, I would give this. Let me try this again. Mm. Oh, eighty-three or eighty-four. Eighty-three plus out of a hundred for this Frappon VSOP. And let's move on uh, to the XO, which by law, is it 10 years old or eight years old? Um, I think it's eight, but someone correct me on that if I'm wrong. Maybe maybe they changed it to 10. To, it, whatever. It's older than the VSOP was. Um, on the nose with the Frappon XO. In the same territory, I'm getting, uh, so the flowers are still in the lead. Lots of flowers, kind of potpourri, almost verging on soap, but not quite getting there. But then the French oak elements, um, the Quercus robur are, are coming through much more heavily. Um, so like wood ash, uh, um, old attic where something caught on fire a couple of years back and you can still kind of smell the the the, the, the smoky remains um, kind of like burning flowers alongside the uh, the potpourri sort of thing a little bit of little hints of fruitiness again leaning towards towards stone fruit 
and yeah, almost like a peach, but also like peach candy, kind of in the back there. Maybe like one, um, one or two figs in there as well. This actually feels like a more congested nose than the VSOP did. Let me, let me double check that. Yeah. The VSOP is actually more open than this. So on the, on the palette. Definitely in the, in the same style, the same um, the same kind of, of playbook being run here. What I'm getting is a much extended finish and much more sort of ashy tannic grippiness, which I guess is is what you would expect from this, right? There's a lot of um, a lot more black tea on the back end. There's more kind of coffee elements going into this, like uh, like you just picked out some. Um, kind of medium roast Costa Rican coffee beans and started chewing that on them in the middle of your cognac drinking. Again, very floral in the palate. More flowers than the potpourri or the soap thing. And lots of oak. Um, little hints of vanilla, prune, um, and those sort of coffee, uh, black tea, ashy, wood tanniny elements. Lots of black pepper uh, on this. Still doing a similar kind of thing with the, like, it feels sweeter than it is. Like, it feels... It feels sweet on the mid palate, and then that kind of drops off, and you get a kind of nice dry finish. Um, it's fun, but um, I'm struggling to say that it's that much better than the VSOP. Hang on, let me go back to the VSOP for a second. Nose in the XO is more closed. That could just be my fault. I've had these open for a couple of hours, but um, you know I've only had it in the glass for a little bit for since this video started, right? On the palette is definitely definitely bringing more wood, and yet I struggle to say that it's better. Um, okay, yeah, it's it's the, the mouth feels a little bit more substantive. It kind of holds on for a little bit longer. Um, but I would still only give this an 84 out of 100 versus the 83 plus of the VSOP. Um, I mean, the problem with both of these things is the problem with almost everything on the American Cognac shelf, um, whether it be from the big four or sort of the other smaller brands also just making stuff at 40% and so on, um, that it just... You have a, a wonderful, delicate spirit, and it just feels like it's not being presented at its best. Um, even the henny, there's elements in the henny that I, I really like, the sort of, that orangey thing. Um, and it's just not allowed to kind of speak up for itself because of the way it's presented, and also because of the size of the, of the batches. So here's hoping that uh, Frappon, when it with its new shiny new importer and hopefully you know a new push into the U.S., we'll start to notice that hey you know here in the U.S. you know we can all buy Ezra Brooks at ninety proof for what fifteen bucks less um, pretty much anywhere like that's the standard we're used to and it's a really good standard so these would both be vastly improved um, with an extra 2%, 3% alcohol. That's all you need. I mean, you could could go more if you wanted to, but um, that would help immensely um, 
with the way these are sort of delivering what they got. Not bad, 80, uh, 83 plus for the VSOP, 84 for the XO, um, and 76 for the Henny VS. And I was expecting to go worse on this. Um, honestly, I still don't like it, but, and I still think the, uh, the Doucet VSOP is a better deal by a lot. Oh, yeah, that, that metallic turn on the end. Jesus. Um, but, you know, um, this, the, the, the category can do better. The category can absolutely do better. And uh, the, the good qualities on all of these kind of suggest that. And uh, I don't know. That's kind of all I, all I got to say. Um, 76 for the Henny. And you already heard the other scores. So I'm going to cut it off here. Um, not belabor my point. Thanks for watching and cheers.